Welcome to Heartspeak Podcast, episode 203, Reaching for the Stars. Well, hello there, wherever you are in the world, you are welcome. It's good to be back with you. Thank you for letting me into your lives. And we're going to be reaching for the stars. Because the last few weeks, I've been very much involved and interested in the subject of star seeds being seeded, the stars, the ETs, the UFOs. And in all my research, I've learned that things are speeding up where we thought we were going to have what they call first contact around the end of 2025, 26. It's now speeding up to being probably within the next 12 months, 2023 especially. And why is this speeding up? Well, the message was is that humanity <laughs> in its wisdom has now developed so much technology, it actually could cause itself damage. Surprise, surprise. Now, I also heard, and, and this ties into what I had heard myself many years ago, that nuclear war will not be allowed. We will not be allowed to destroy ourselves through a nuclear war, because in doing that, we will destroy or damage the earth. And we're not going to be allowed to do that anymore. Very good thing. And I always think back to the time where it is probable that the start of understanding the ability to split the atom, to work on that level, was given to humanity, certain scientists, to be able to actually expand our consciousness, to expand our awareness. What did we do? We created a bomb. And I think that what then happened, certainly in my area, Roswell, 1947 and onwards, we saw far more interaction between humans and ETs, I think because they realized <laughs> that we are very unsafe when we hold on to something so precious that's being given as a gift for expansion and we use it for war. And so in the late 80s or maybe middle 80s, I got involved with a group who were involved with Doctors Against Nuclear War. I realized that we couldn't perhaps at that point stop nuclear weapons being developed, but we could prevent nuclear war. And it was an international group that really was very inspirational for me, meeting doctors from all over the world who realized if we went ahead with this, this is going to be a disaster. And I think that was at that time that we were speaking about Star Wars or putting weapons into space. And that was when I heard the message you will not be allowed to do this because this would cause damage not only to humans, but to also your planet, but also to space. And I heard, you can do what you like to each other, but you're not going to step outside your environment. And as I say, anything that's going to damage the planet is not an option. Now, we've not been told this. You might say, well, who are these beings? These beings are our higher self, our higher mind our self that lives in other dimensions. So again, it's not about people controlling us. It's about actually this would not be wise. And I think we would all agree on that <laughs> idea. Because I also am aware, and I've heard this from my own inner guidance, that we have got to this point of evolution several times before and not made it. And again, in my listening to others speak recently, it is said that that's why Atlantis went down underneath the waves was because once again, there was a, a greedy faction, a group of beings who felt that they wanted to play God. And it wasn't that there was a God that then said, let's send that floods. It was because of our technology that we didn't really understand, even though we pretended we did, that we cause this to happen. And this, I think, is happening again. We, we don't understand some of these technologies and the effect it has on our planet, on our weather, on our climate, on humans, and we mess around to the point that we then cause destruction. And what I'm hearing is that, yes, Atlantis did go underneath the waters, and that was the end of that particularly what we call root race, but we have a greater chance, a much higher chance this time 
not because we don't still have greedy people, but because more and more individuals are waking up and at, at an accelerated rate, which is very exciting. And I think it's very interesting, if I want to put it that way, that if you go back to 2018, probably 2019, nobody would have ever felt that people would have woken up because of a virus. But because of what happened around that virus, and yes, a lot of fear and a lot of anguish and a lot of deaths, but there was also the extent in which the mass of humanity was being pushed in a certain direction really caused that inner revolution that says, hang on a minute, it's not just taking away perhaps personal freedom in one area, it's taking away personal freedom in other areas. And that is what I think is going to keep happening. It's all about where is your personal freedom? Where is my personal freedom? Now, there are always consequences to that freedom. In other words, I have the personal freedom to, I don't know, say something to someone and they have the personal freedom to say something back to me. <laughs> so there's always a consequence to my actions. But to have that choice to say something or do something is, it starts with me, that choice. And when we don't have that choice, then we have lost our, our way. And because Uranus is still in Taurus, God bless it, and it's about to go retrograde, which I'll talk about next week. But because it's looking at finance, food, fuel, um, liberty, <laughs> flights, uh, travel, it's all about the things that we rely on on a very basic level, and that's particularly fuel, finance, and food. Those things are when those natural sources are taken away from us, when those things that bring us that, that very basic needs of, um, that are met, then there will be these revolutions that occur. And I think that's what's stepping up more and more. So putting that aside, I then said, okay, so what can we do in this time? That's happening, that's a small group that's happening there. But if I look at it on a much larger level, why is everything speeding up and what is speeding up? It's not, oh, it's speeding up in an emergency. It's just saying, okay, many, many humans are now waking up to who they are. And what we would need to talk about is who are we? And as I go back into the work of many wonderful speakers that I've been listening to, especially people like Mary Rod Rodwell, they talk about that for millions of years, beings from all over this universe and multidimensionally, and I want to keep reminding you, you are one of these beings, we have been planting seeds in the DNA of humans. All right, so the DNA that we just see as these two strands of DNA making up a gene, we are much more than that. And what you have heard me speak about is that even if we just look at those two strands of DNA, we say, okay, that only 8%, we'll call it 9% for what it's worth, is actually functional. It makes what my hair color is, well, almost, uh, how I look and my proteins and my hormones, et cetera. And that, that other 90% was seen as junk DNA. Okay, now we know that junk DNA is not junk. It's a vitally important part of who we are. And if we want to see it that way, we could say that contains that other part of the DNA that the scientists have not been able to read, contains these different seeds that have come from across the dimensions. I'm gonna put it that way. And what we understand is that 50% of that 90% has come from viral infections over thousands, millions of years. Back in probably 1985, I listened to Fred Hoyle, who was a very important scientist back then, talk about how he had seen viruses, swarms of viruses in outer space and how viruses have unique properties of being able to withstand 
high radiation and high heat that doesn't exist on this planet. So even though we might say that a recent virus may have been produced in the laboratory, the source of that, what they were playing with, came from somewhere else. So one way in which we were seeded or our DNA has been seeded has been through viral infections. And again, I want just to remind us that we have lots of viruses in our body. There are circulating. A virus is not necessarily the enemy, the devil. And many times it was the way in which those who wish to impart new consciousness into a human being, a human body, used the DNA or RNA of a virus to actually implant that into the human body to change the body so that the soul could evolve within this new body. With me? Okay. Now, I know some of you are still thinking like, well, yeah, but what about the vaccine? What about the virus? Yes, I think there have been those who wish to manipulate or, or mirror such actions that have been taking place for millions of years from a very crude level, trying to shut down some of the DNA that was in, with it, with, that is in with a, within, within us now. Why are they doing that? Because they recognized that this, even 50% of our junk DNA is being activated at this time. And they, they, the beings who decided to create the viruses in a laboratory <laughs> said, we can't have people waking up because once they wake up, they realize that they have freedom and they have self-will when they connect to their higher self, their higher mind. And so they had a very crude way of trying to shut down our genes by putting in different things into those vaccines, for instance, that caused the immune system to not know if it was friend or enemy. So it's caused a lot of disruption, and I'm very sorry for that. But beyond that, I want to say the reason that that happened was the rate of people waking up. And that is enhanced by that cosmic storm that's happening, that new, those waves of photons, that light energy that's coming into our planet, the increased activity of the sun and the weakening of our magnetic field. So all of that is saying we are awash with this energy. And what's happening is our bodies are being upgraded, rewired, transformed, and it is leaving us feeling tired. <laughs> anxious, depressed, achy, having strange sensations, having energy flooding through us one minute and exhausted the next. Yes. So in this rewiring that is really happening so that your body can accommodate this upgraded soul, because that's what's happening. The soul is, is now integrating all those seeds into itself and going, okay, let's go. And then he looks at the body and goes, okay, you're not quite ready for this. <laughs> so as those seeds are being activated within the DNA, it's also, of course, activating it, if one could say, on the, on the etheric and on the universal level of my DNA. And this is what I've come to understand, that even though we go back to my two strands of DNA, and people have talked about 12 strands of DNA, which was our original form. I think we're much more than that. And what my inner guidance is saying is it's not about more and more strands that you're going to see if I look under a microscope. It's actually that the DNA that we see under a microscope is like looking at a cell under a microscope. We cannot read the etheric body, the astral body, the mental body, the soul body, that any of us who do energy work can feel and see when we look at someone's aura. So I believe the DNA has its own aura or its own subtle bodies. And I think that can go into many different dimensions. So it's not just a linear expansion. I think that it's more like, what if you know about the Fibonacci numbers, 
I think that every time it divides, it divides into another dimension, another dimension. I think the DNA carries consciousness at many different levels and levels of consciousness, but levels of dimensions, etc. cetera. Don't go too far down that. But why I'm saying that is that my DNA that is very physical just shows me this physical body. But as I get deeper into my DNA, or you could say the frequency of my DNA, I can see, feel into that, that is my soul. And so as I'm talking about these seeds, they're not just planted in my physical DNA, they're planted at every level and, and exist on every level because a lot of the frequencies um, that are of these seeds, <laughs> these seeds have a frequency that cannot actually be seen or exist within that physical plane. That makes sense? So it's not like I could look at your DNA and say, ah, oh, I know exactly who you are <laughs> or which seeds are being activated. They are being activated at higher and higher frequencies. Now, what does this mean to us? Hey, what does that matter? It, it means that we are now being tuned in to who we are. It's like it's, people are describing it like having the key or we tap in a code, <laughs> if we can remember our password. So we tap in a code or tap in a password. But it's also that password is not something you have to remember with your head. It's the remembering comes because there's a resonance. All right. So you may hear a song and you're like, I can't remember why I like that song, but it resonates with me. Or you may see a color of a plant and you go, you know, I just love that color. Not sure why. Again, your brain doesn't need to know, but I resonate when I'm around that plant. It seems to be some part of me comes alive. Or you may see a rainbow, as I saw yesterday, a double rainbow. And it's like, oh, yes, I remember. I'm not sure what I remember, but I remember. Or you see 1111 or 222 or 333, these magical numbers on, the, on your clocks. So what's happening is we are not only being bombarded with, one could say, new consciousness, whatever. You know, you might say, what does that mean? But we're also being bombarded with these codes, these star codes, these different keys, codes, I'll give different words for it, that are waking us up. And that might happen in a dream. So you may have a dream and you wake up and think, God, that was a great dream. And you think, what on earth was that about? <laughs> in fact, you've forgotten it. But in the dream, it's like, of course. <laughs> and then you forget. In one of my dreams recently, I had this amazing crystal with so many different sides to it. It wasn't particularly symmetrical. I can still feel it in my hands. But I knew that this crystal, I could look in different aspects of that crystal and see different images. And possibly that's why I'm talking about these different interdimensional ways. The way we look through things will allow us to see different things. And, and quite a while back, I did a podcast on the crystal skulls and you may may or may not know what those are but do go back and have a look it's on my website but the crystal skulls are were that they was as if all that information from maybe an individual some people say it's just from a wise individual or maybe a group or a star system all of that was put into that crystal skull and what i found that when i was looking at those crystal skulls because i spent some time with them Wherever you looked, you saw something different. And it's all holographic. So we only see what we already know, what already resonates with us. But in, in seeing something that's familiar and resonating with it, with it, we wake up. And that's what's happening now. So what I understand is that if, for instance, um, you resonate with being an Arcturian. And again, doesn't matter which group, Palladian, Arcturian, Syrian, Sirius, then you will be fascinated by reading more about that. Or if you do read about it, you say, oh, that's me, that's me, I'm like that. So the more we maybe read or we become aware of something, we see it maybe on, on the internet, we watch a YouTube of it, we go, oh my goodness, they're talking about me. And all that's happening, it's not like, oh, now I need to go off to that planet and become that planet or that galaxy. 
It's just saying, no, that seed in you is activated. And then you say, well, what does that mean? It means that whatever qualities that are in within that star system or that planet or that galaxy or that dimension are now being activated within you. And you may feel different. You may actually find that yourself no longer wishing to go along a certain path anymore. The people you might have met no longer interest you or the groups you used to be involved with no longer interest you. And that is the key at this time, not only to resonate with something, but when you resonate, say, how am I different? Oh, I, I don't know. I'm taking up cookery or taking up art or I'm taking up gardening. Or I just feel more peaceful or calmer, or maybe I feel more ready to have for a fight. As these seeds, one could say, start to bloom, and then they bear fruit, so this doesn't take my whole analogy, we will find ourselves changing. Our physical body may change. You may find you're starting to eat different foods or not eat certain foods because your physical body doesn't want it. And it's not that it's wrong or right. You're not following some diet. You're just saying, you know, that doesn't work for me anymore. And so allowing that physical body, maybe you need more sleep. Maybe you need less sleep. <laughs> maybe you need to exercise more. Maybe you need to exercise less. Listen to the body because it's, tr it's helping you to adapt to these, these seeds now coming to fruition. That's what I want to say. And when that happens... The thing that will hold that back, and, I, and I'm aware of that in myself and I in others, is this desire to carry on on a pathway created by our beliefs that say, this is what I need to do. This is where I am. And the one thing the spirit world keep trying to tell us is the time is not linear. So when we start talking this is my past, this is my future. We are locked into, do you remember? Temporally induced mind experiment. That's what time is. It's an experiment. So if we keep talking about the past, and it might be past lives as much as ancestors or our own past, we are continually playing into a script that is not in harmony with us. So if you can just even imagine, as I often describe, we have a flower with our soul in the center, lots of petals. Even if you had that experience, you could say, I had one of my petals holds that experience. It would be a change from saying, oh, when I was growing up, this happened to me. And then when I got older, and then and then, every time we put things back in a linear pattern, we are locking ourselves into, again, as I say, a script, a simulation that isn't ours. So I don't mind you saying one part of me um, is, the, is the inner child that had this issue. But once we do that, we can have a better sense of what do I want to do? What do I want to learn from that? How do I take what's valuable from that? How do I let go of it? Because that's where we are now. When we keep that story, that lineage going, we are being held in a timeline that is not ours and not healthy. Now, I could say, as I've said many a time, what do you need to take from that experience? We're calling it an experience rather than a childhood or something. What did you learn? Why did you create it? What are you taking from it? Who do you need to forgive? Do you need to forgive yourself? How do you let it go? And if you can still feel the energy of that experience, and say, no, no, Christine, you don't understand. I mean, it was, a, it was a Sunday, I think it was 30 years ago, and it was raining. If you can still put yourself in there, you have not finished that experience. Now, either, as I say, you need to go back, say, what is it I'm missing? Or you need to do the act of real forgiveness, which isn't, oh, I forgive my mother, or I forgive my father, whatever. It's like, do you have compassion for those people? And that word compassion means can I say I may not understand their decision to act in that way, but I understand that that was their role and that, therefore, I'm going to let go of. And so it really says to all of us, and I've been practicing this, 
is saying, okay, I may not agree with certain people's actions in this world today, but I can keep saying to the, to myself and to them, I understand you're, you're playing a part in this. I choose not to be part of your script, but I appreciate you playing your part because I don't know why you're doing it. So we don't have to understand and give it labels. We just need to say, you've got your part to play. I've got my part to play. I make a choice as to whether or not I join you in your, in your drama or not. And my final thought on that is to really say that one this other suggestion I've been doing is putting myself in a bubble, which was very nice, which is what we call a space bubble. But if you choose to continue a sort of linear path, what I felt found useful for myself is to imagine my past as a bubble that's behind me that then dissipates, collapses, pops. And so when I'm thinking of something that's happened in the past, and I use that word, I can choose to keep going back into that bubble and recreating it, or by my thoughts, I just let that bubble dissolve. And with that, doesn't mean I haven't taken whatever it is I needed from it, but I'm no longer carrying that wounding or that, that issue, no, carrying, no longer carrying that individual who turned up in that past. It may help you. So I said, just suggest, you know, once you've taken, you just close that bubble. And then you can do, in the front of you, you can open up another bubble. And that's another way of doing it. So let me just reiterate, everything is speeding up. We are being given the chance to become more familiar with ourselves as star beings, star seeds, that, and recognizing that the idea of having contact with ETs is not new, been having for millions of years, and we are who we are, not just in our physical form, but in our soul form, in our higher self, our higher mind, that we are star beings. And that we chose which seeds to, um, to incarnate into. So the way your body looks and the way you are, you literally, you could imagine picking up all those seeds and say, I'll take that one, I'll take that one, I'll take that one. And here you are, here's Christine. Now, some of those come from my culture, some may come from my ancestors, some may come from my past life, all of that not mattering. And some of them may come from so far away that I couldn't even describe. But what's important is we recognize, am I living and allowing all my seeds to manifest in this time? So are there seeds, petals, I know I've kind of mixed my metaphors, but are there seeds that you're saying, oh, I haven't got time for that because I've got to do this? Because if you've even got the hint of something in your mind, I'd love to write that book. I'd like to get involved with that. Oh, I put that aside. This is the time. There's never been a better time to say, today's the day I'm doing this. No excuses. If you're getting dreams, write them down. If you're receiving information, from, from your spirit world, write it down, so express it, share it. Just in the sharing with someone else, sharing onto your journal, writing it is already changing consciousness. Please don't let it be an excuse or I'll wait till when something, something happens, then I'll. This is the time. And as those see you and I say, I'm ready for that seed to bloom. When we do that, we allow everybody around us to have that same experience. So we're literally activating other people's seeds when we do the same for ourselves because they resonate with our seed that we've allowed to come into to fruition, to bloom. So I wish you all well. It is uh, such a fun time, <laughs> she says, to be here. Recognize that there is so much help all the star families, all the star seeds, wherever your seed come from, there is a resonance going on that may not happen physically, energetically, because some of you come from so far away, you only know it in your dreams or you only know it in a small segment. You just go, oh, I saw this geometry shape. I heard that song. I felt that. I don't know where it comes from. So there's a lot happening in color, sound, symbolism, geometry that's just saying something happened last night and I know I'm a different person. So 
So I look forward to seeing you next week and speaking with you next week. And until then, take care. Many blessings. Thanks for listening to the Heart Speak Podcast with Dr. Christine Page. Please check out all Heart Speak episodes in the podcast archive section on www.christinepage.com. Heart Speak is also available on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, and now playing on Amazon Music and iHeartRadio. You can also watch the archive podcast on Christine's channel on YouTube and now on Rumble. Connect with Christine on Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook, including her newest Facebook group, The Great Mother Calling. Do share with family, friends, colleagues. Join us next time for another edition of Heart Speak.